thought I'd do a little before and after. So this is basically stock. Nothing here is different. It's been running for almost a week. Keep the temperature set at 104. See the heaters on right now. It fluctuates between 103, 104. It kicks back on when it drops. I think that ground cloth is upside down, but I'm not sure it matters. It's basically nothing, so that's part of the improvement we're going to do there. This is the extra $120 energy efficient cover which I think is definitely worth it. There's a drink holder there so that sticks up a little bit. It is obvious here that some of the heat is absorbed in the ground and getting some energy losses there. The only thing kind of special I've done and I gotta redo this GFCI because it's upside down and the things hang but I got this E-Tech City. I don't even know how you say that for 20 bucks it's a dual outlet um, smart plug the smart plug function doesn't really do anything for us because if you turn the power off to this the breaker gfci resets um, and even if you were to replace that gfci uh, when it goes off this control panel goes off so forget about trying to set a timer of any sorts on this um, my hope we'll get into this later is that I can at least have the filter go off while the heater's not on. That'll save a little bit of energy. But anyhow, the reason I got this thing for 20 bucks is it does, um, it's outdoor rated and is an energy kilowatt monitor. So um, it has been in the 20s and 30s here just about all week. Um, and I'm averaging, if we use it for about 30 minutes and put the cover back on, about $2 a day with it running 24 7. So I don't know, you add that up, right? In the summertime, obviously, it wouldn't use as much heat, but you're looking at, you know, five, six hundred dollars probably all year long to run it for utility costs, which is pretty expensive. Um, for some people, you know, that's worth it. Others um, probably want to look at maybe getting more efficient, and that's what I'm going to do. More importantly, though, is this uh, unit says not to be stored outside or to be used when it's minus or uh, when it's below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, that's gonna be the little project that we're gonna get into next. I will say though, um, if you know anything about water lines freezing and whatnot, you know, really the only concern is when the water isn't running. And you can see in here, um, here's the pipes, but this is running 24 seven and it's circulating warm water. So I don't know why this couldn't work outdoors uninsulated. 24 7 um, as long as the pumps running because the water is not going to freeze because it's running and circulating 104 degree heat um, maybe there's something internally here um, I feel this and it's pretty warm it's obviously rated to be outdoors during the rain um, but again you'll see that's our project that we're going to get into so this is what it looks like in upstate New York in the middle of January I'm going to take it down tonight because it's supposed to get into the teens and that just makes me nervous, so um, more to come. Steps for 80 bucks off Amazon too. Definitely recommend those, especially if you got kids or shorter people. Um, stay tuned, more to come. All right, it's 20 something degrees outside. The hot tub is away. And uh, there's a cover right there. I'm in the mess. Um, so I've got two four by eights. Sorry, the music is on. Hopefully this comes out okay. Two, four by eight. Um, green guard. Basically, it's just foam backing board. This is going to be what we're going to lay down on the bottom. Um, I thought about getting one inch. Um, a couple other people had posted on the internet. They got half inch. Um, one inch seemed pretty thick, and it was almost twice the cost. And I'm honestly not so sure. One extra R value is going to make a big difference. So anyhow, I got three quarter inch. Two, four by eights. Kind of see there. I still think I think that's nice. Kind of interesting thing here. Just for giggles while we're doing it. Um, so I pulled this Friday night. It's Sunday afternoon. It's been 15, 25 degrees tops. And there's still a pretty good circle there from where all that heat absorbed into the bottom there. Um, 
did upgrade the electrical today, put in a new 20 amp GFCI, which is what my fuse is, and an outlet cover box, a new one there. Uh, flipped it the other way so it can hang a little nicer, and then those are the in-use boxes, which I think are nice, kind of keep everything protect protected. Excuse me there. So um, that was actually expensive. Those GFCIs are like 20 bucks. Uh, covers like eight bucks. Um, obviously, you don't have to do that unless you want to, but I think it's kind of nice. Um, so we got that done this morning. Now we're gonna do the insulation. Um, got some reflective tape. I think you could probably use duct tape, but this is what they use for that reflective stuff. I don't know, honestly, if it matters when it comes to insulation and you're putting it on the ground, but I think it was three bucks for all this stuff, reflective at Lowe's, I think that's what it's called, Reflectex or some shit like that. Anyhow, uh, give me a second and I'll post some updates. All right, so uh, nothing exciting here, just uh, show you what I did. Obviously laid the tarp down, covered it up, Try to set over um, as much to one side as I could. Put that tape down. Just use a razor blade. Um, I was not super duper careful. Obviously tried to trace it as best as I could. And I could do a much better job than I did. So hopefully that gives us quite a bit more insulation for everything there. Um, I do have a decent amount of scraps left over that I'm hoping go towards a uh, Enclosure of the grill box, which will be the next part of this video that will show. Um, but yeah, there we are. More to come. my big tub was inflated so I could test fit it before I did that because that would have been perfect and obviously I want a smaller hole if I can but uh, the ones on the right should be fine so I'm not gonna mess with dremeling that out yet until I know I need to and I think I'm gonna have to blow up the tub and find out for sure stay tuned So, a little bit of a bummer of an update. I'm now in my basement. This thing inflated for a test fit before I get too carried away here. And I was always concerned about the thickness of that and the depth of those. And as you can see here, hopefully, I just don't have clearance. Say, well, move forward, but the problem is it slaps. You can go out over, and honestly, I don't really want to remove those should I need to claim a warranty or something. So I got to think this one out a little bit. Um, I can trim away some insulation. Um, it's just going to be so tight. I don't know if you can see in there, but. I gotta get about a, another couple inches. And I just can't push. This is only about three quarters of an inch. And then this is easily another inch and a half. And then trimming away that, I'm losing my insulation, which I could wrap up or something. So I don't know. I'm gonna ponder this one and I will return. Alright, yet another update. The wings, super simple. Just a 
Phillips head screw in there. Pop right out. Thought I was in luck. And then figured out this front lip appears to be injected, molded on. It's part of the entire case, not just the front part of the case or anything, but just straight up. And I would start unscrewing things here, but honestly, it doesn't matter because you can see right under there, it's just part of the case. And that is, here's my thumb, a good two inches, inch and a half maybe, let's say two. And uh, if I uh, saw so Dremel that off, which is no big deal, it's easy enough to do. Um, I probably, I don't know if I voided something, but I certainly can't go back. Basically, we're at the point of no return because then I'd have that exposed. I'm thinking, I guess, worst case scenario, I can try to do a nice clean cut and glue it back together if I decide this whole project doesn't work. But now we're getting into that part of the game that I know you and I probably wanted to avoid, and that was really modifying any of the factory stuff. Putting it in a box that you built that you can take it in and out of, that's one thing. So, again, more thinking, I'll come back. So one other little thing to notice here before I go to bed, ponder this, is uh, there's this lip that sticks out from the Rubbermaid. You can see there, it's pretty tight. Granted, there's no water or anything in here yet, but I don't think it's an issue. I don't love it uh, with that drain hose hits it. Um, now, normally you could just unscrew everything and then under it, or actually you can't. Now that I'm thinking that out loud, you're supposed to drain there first, so it's another thing I'm gonna have to figure out because you won't be able to disconnect if you can't access that drain hose. So what I'm probably gonna do is just dremel off the whole front of this thing. But I still don't love the idea of not being able to hook a hose up. My spot where I've got it, I don't need a hose. Kind of drains okay, but that'll fit. But it'll go all back kind of into the unit, which isn't great. So yay. All right, next day, a uh, small update here. Um, one that I don't think is going to be of any importance. Um, hopefully, knock on wood, you'll see the base here is, is different. This Rubbermaid container from the start, you see in one of the other videos, really bothered me. It seemed really flimsy. For a hundred bucks, I was, I was really surprised by that. So went on trusty old Amazon, and sure enough, the top review um, is something that um, makes me as an engineer feel stupid, but uh, mentions how bad the instructions are. Um, and they are pretty poor, but it only took me a few minutes to set this up. Um, and it seems like I am very much not alone in that the base of this thing um, was upside down in that previous uh, few videos. <laughs> it's a it's a dumb thing. It made me nervous that where it would sit on the inside, given a concave or sort of convex shape, might matter with the alignment of the hose, uh, holes, excuse me. Um, as you know, once you drill, you really can't go back and I want these to be as small as possible. Um, I don't, it does seem like maybe it's sitting an inch or so higher, um, but everything seems still pretty accessible. Um, I still think I'm gonna drill off the front of this uh, I still have to dremel out this hole so that I can get this in here um, and still have to dremel off the front of this lip here. Uh, probably about to there is, is my goal, which is going to give me enough room to, to be able to thread the other ends of these through here. I got this all blown up over here in my test fitting. Um, I think these are about two and a half inches if I remember right. And uh, anyhow, um, the positive of this whole 
shit show here is um, this thing is sturdy as heck now. There's no gaps in the side that I was all worried about. I thought I was going to have to come back here and run some screws through the side, foam it up, tape it up, try to keep it as well insulated as possible. Um, now everything uh, is, is much better here. Still doesn't really close the exact right spot. And you can see those holes don't line up perfectly. I'm not sure if that's anything to do with the foam on the inside or whatever, but and for a hundred bucks, you'd expect something to be maybe a little nicer than this. So um, I've got ideas for that too. Um, the other thing I'll note, um, I gave myself room here to uh, flip up this uh, this thing here, as I was hoping I wouldn't have to cut anything or remove anything. Um, if you do this over and you follow my path here, I'd move it over to the side. Um, I still have plenty of room over the side here, um, but I'd move it over even further. And my goal is honestly probably to put some stuff in here. I don't think pool chemicals or anything, but um, towels, extra towels that'll help um, with the insulation and also be handy just to have a couple extra towels there. Um, what I didn't mention before either is I took another two and a half inch uh, hole saw to the back there. Oh boy, all right, getting crazy. Um, so that I could thread the power cord through there. Um, thought about cutting out a small hole in the bottom and then reassembling the, the top. It, you could do that. I've got to run the heat trace through here still too. Um, and I'm probably just gonna foam up that. Um, once this is in here, I really don't think I'll ever take this out. Um, but obviously, I definitely wanna be able to um, take out or separate the tub from the pump but this is going to be a pretty permanent solution inside this box I think I don't I don't see any reason I want to take it out stay tuned all right Some pretty big status updates we got going on here um, as you can see the uh, unit is successfully within my enclosure and connected um, it is not fully screwed in. I learned some lessons along the way here that I will share with you. Um, again, I hope you, if you decide to tackle this project, you watch the whole video before you start doing stuff. Learn from my mistakes. So, um, first and foremost, um, my Uremel, my old craftsman here, shit the bed. Um, and when I went out to Lowe's to get another one, right there I said you know what let me just see what I got for a four inch hole saw so instead of trying to carve up the front to make this section here bigger if you remember from the previous post um, or the previous set part of the video um, I can't see that there but anyhow took that bad boy uh, and just made a nice circular four inch hole um, that way that entire unit plus the uh, fit and fits in there um, obviously you can see too the uh, point in our return was shaving the face off of that lip there that took I don't know 30 seconds right uh, just cut right off the top watch the little black cord um, I don't know, you'll see it if you try to do it underneath there um, and then um, the other thing I found which is really a pain in the ass with this whole thing is these fittings um, end up being tied in right where your unit is so you I mean this this project I'm gonna say it right now is not for anyone who decides that they want to take this up and down at any sort of frequency you can get your hands in there maybe smaller hands easier but I had a heck of a time spent maybe I don't know 10 minutes getting it just right uh, so I could get my hands in there to tighten them up. Now when I go to set this up for the first time outside, I'm going to make sure they're really nice and snug. Right now they're not because I'm going to take this apart because I've got lots more to do here. Um, but anyhow, that's something to consider, right? I mean, you, you've got to get your hand down in here. Um, you don't have a lot of space. I didn't want to make the, the holes too big because, again, I'm trying to keep this insulated. Um, one thing I did t do, uh, which made a hell of a mess, but I took that four inch hole saw and I cut out just the insulation. 
did not mess at all with the exterior wall there. Still a two and a half inch slide. Um, what I think I would do if I was to do this and start over, um, I'd, I'd do a three inch hole. I'd give my hands enough room, um, leave more insulation and whatnot. Um, let's see, what else? Um, if you're gonna do a, a, a mock, realize that your pad is not down. So this unit is, you know, uh, probably a good two and a half inches raised uh, off the floor from where the tub is. So it's propped up at an angle right now. Um, but remember at the very beginning of this video, we made that uh, three quarter inch foam pad that this is gonna sit on, um, which I think is gonna raise it enough. So there might be just a bit of a bend, uh, but nothing that I am concerned about. Uh, those are pretty flexible in there. Um, let's see, what else did I learn? Oh, um, after fixing this uh, Rubbermaid unit here, um, I see that my drain pad's got plenty of room, so I don't have to hack that off. That's pretty nice. Um, trying to think. Something I've been pondering. Um, instead of covering this whole lid, having it kind of come down on the top here what i think i might do is i'm gonna make a foam insert that goes inside here uh, and then i'm gonna use some foam like a squeezy weather stripping type stuff so that there's a little bit of a seal otherwise i'm never going to get an airtight seal i'm not going for an airtight seal but the more insulated it is the less energy i'm going to use to keep this unit in here warm and uh quote unquote weatherproof um, maybe an ancillary benefit um, when this is closed if you close it when your hot tub's up and running and you're sitting there you may have a little bit more room for drink storage um, I don't know, trying to look at the bright side here right so uh, I'm probably boring you now at this point but uh, pretty happy with this at the moment um, next steps I'm gonna start uh, sealing this in I'm gonna make the cover um, and also I'm going to start playing around with the heat trace tape that I bought and figure out, uh, you know, what's the best way to wrap that around these internal tubes here. When you have this space out here, but keeping those nice and warm, uh, I think will translate into the inner workings of the tub. And, uh, show you what that looks like next when I get to it. All right. Another update. Um, if you haven't checked out on me yet, maybe this is the one that does it. Um, so the last time I was here, showed that uh, everything fit up good. Now it's time to do the insulation and the heat trace. So I bought this stuff off of Amazon called Heat It. I wasn't sure how big to get. Um, so I went with 24, which actually I think is going to be about perfect. You could probably do one less loop, do this a little differently than I did, and get away with 18, but um, whatever. Um, so anyhow, how this stuff works is it is, uh, and I would just go and read about it then listen in to me, but, but basically it is a uh, self-regulating heat coil. So based on the outside temperature, um, sections of this turn on and off. Um, basically goes between, uh, I think, negative 15 and then up to 50. The warmer it is, ambient temperature, 50, the less wattage it uses. So if it's really freaking cold. Um, this is something like 7 watts a foot. Again, don't quote me on that, but um, the whole thing's cranking. It's, it's going to use some of your energy. And remember, the whole point of this thing is to reduce energy and, and prolong the life of this pump thing. So... Um, Anyhow, it is uh, generally used in, on roofs to prevent ice buildup and then on pipes for heat trace. It is rated safely for plastic and um, an insulation and uh, metal. So I'm not really concerned about this rubber. Could be interesting. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I think these, these tubes in here might be easily replaceable if it's a, the wrong thing to do. But I started at the bottom and just started looping it around and around. Um, I don't know if it's gonna make even the slightest difference um, wrapping it around the unit like I did. Uh, and it's not super pliable, like your extension cords, you know, you can bend these all around, do all that. 
This stuff's pretty stiff and it was coiled together. I actually had to string it out overnight just to get some flexibility. I used the uh, insulation tape to kind of tape it down. Um, I don't really care what this looks like because remember it's going to be inside there so nobody's going to see it. The only thing you would see if you were for some reason a guest in my place, right, is this little unit from the top looking down at it. So you're not going to see any of that crazy wiring. Uh, so how it looks, I don't care. Um, and then I've got some uh, rubber foam insulation that I'm going to wrap around this once it gets installed, but I'm not messing with any of that till I get it all hooked up. Um, open kind of overnight, but the pliability of this stuff kind of settles a little bit. Sure, I could get real sophisticated and, you know, use some of the roof anchors to drill to the side of the unit. I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to see how much energy it uses, um, see if it's even really worth it. Um, what I am hoping, um, if the better, uh, this stays relatively insulated-ish in the winter time, that the heat generated from the pipe itself, plus 24 feet of this, um, that it will be in general low wattage mode and won't be using that much, um, energy. So, that's the update for today. Um, probably done messing with this crap during the week here. This weekend's is going to be in the low 20s and stuff again, so we're still not going to get this bad boy up and running. But what I do plan on working on, and uh, what you'll see coming up in the next video, is finalizing this stuff. I've got some of that great stuff, foam insulation, and I'll take the edges of this, clean it up a little bit, uh, work on the seal for the top, probably do some of that uh, foam insulation and cracks here. Um, this air gap here will provide some significant insulation, um, but it's only as good as I can keep it. So those will be the updates. Um, probably the next big step is to get all that done, and then uh, then it's showtime pretty much. It looks like we might have a stretch where it's starting to warm up here. A little bit enough for me to feel comfortable taking this bad boy out, filling that thing up, and uh, trying my abomination. Um, so yeah, wish me luck. Okay, small update before tomorrow when I look to finish everything up here and hopefully I'll get a finished product sometime this week. So this has been holding okay. This tape is coming off a little bit. I had to reclose it or reseal it a couple times. I'm a little leery of putting anything that's not heat trace rated on this. Um, but what I might do is leave this holding in the side and just kind of firm up the sides maybe with some tougher tape here. Um, the other thing I'm going to do sometime this week before I turn this on and put it outside and worry about the whole thing catching fire is just going to turn it on in my basement for a day while I'm working and see how warm it gets, if it melts anything, that kind of stuff. So um, onto this bad boy. Kind of uh, test fitted some of this foam stuff here. This was left over from the project that I had before, but you can get it at Lowe's. Um, it's called expanding foam or weather seal stuff. You find it kind of in your uh, furnace insulation, you know, door sweep areas, uh, aisles, or whatever. So it's got a sticky back. I'm gonna um, seal it down, but I just wanted to kind of temporary, temporarily see what it would do. Um, this is going to be hard for me to film, so I probably won't do it till I get it all sealed in, but basically, it's not going to do it. You can see maybe in the front here. Um, it should kind of slowly close. Um, it's not closing right now because this is in the way. Um, and give me a better seal. You know, this whole thing is just kind of redneck cob jobbed up. You've seen that. I didn't do any real measuring just kind of eyeballed a lot of this and that's why you see gaps and whatnot it's also not perfectly square i cut this lid inside here um, to fit inside the exterior insulation intentionally what i'm going to do is double uh, double-sided tape that to the top here i don't know if that really even is going to make a huge difference i'm not going for an airtight gap here um, i will probably have to fill in this where it's a little lower there I do want to get as much insulation as I can. Um, but so I turn this off. Again, this is all leftover pieces. Um, and so didn't have to buy anything 
additional, um, I guess if you uh, actually had an ounce of craftsmanship and had patience, I just don't have patience. You could certainly um, measure and cut better, use something other than a razor blade. The other little helpful tent I'll give you, uh, tip, excuse me, you don't have to cut all the way through, and depending on if you're cutting with the grain or against it, it can be a little tricky. Um, what I found is, is just kind of cut about a quarter or about half a way through, um, make your whole cut, and then just bend, uh, and the whole thing just snaps off nice and clean. I wish I knew that a long time ago. Um, but that's why I'm making this video so you guys can kind of learn from my mistakes. Uh, the next part of this, hopefully, I'll have everything. Uh, brought the foam seal in. Um, got some great stuff here. This is a big gap filler. And really, what I'm going to do is kind of hit the bottoms, the edges, the corners. I'm not going to worry about anything over in here. Um, and then I'm going to tape the gap. Um, I've been thinking more and more. I said previously that I was going to fill this in. I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, it was such a pain in the butt to get my fingers in there to screw things that I'm not going to mess with that. So. Um, when I get it all mocked up outside, I'll see what it looks like. But what I plan to do is I've got all sorts of insulation stuff like this. And because I don't want it to be permanent, I'm just going to jam that in there um, to try and make a gap. I don't think this is going to be a big difference in this. If you've ever played with this great stuff, it's, it's nice, but it dries quickly and it can make a hell of a mess. So, yeah, stay tuned. Okay, small update here. Um, as you can see, I have use some of that foam to fill in those cracks. Um, I wasn't super liberal with it. I hit the seams that looked like there was a little bit of a gap. Um, in a minute here I'm going to go over as it's been drying for a little bit, go over it with that tape on all the seams. Uh, and then I also put the foam down here. Um, I made sort of an executive decision with this lid, um, thinking about how Sorry, I'm out of breath, but I'm working out. Um, <laughs> thinking about just going up and down, flexing with the different condi uh, weather conditions. Um, what I decided to do was not try to make this an exact fit. It's going to close pretty nice anyhow. This is some extra insulation, um, but having that airtight gap here I don't think is as important. So you can see, it closes pretty nicely. Um, this is they call self-expanding foam so right away there's not an airtight seal um, you just kind of press down and it seals up pretty nice um, trying to see the best way to show you I might do some expanding foam with like a block on top of this I think a better way to maybe put yourself in a better spot would be to just make sure you've got maybe another half an inch or an inch trimmed off of this but I'm pretty happy. So all that's left now is going to tape it up. I'm going to put that bad boy inside. Uh, and then tomorrow I'm going to run a test while it's indoors with that heat trace on. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to work if it, with it being uh, as warm as it is inside, about 68 degrees. But it should still turn on. Basically just making sure it's not going to melt or fry anything, which it shouldn't. And then i uh, going to mess around with these holes here with some uh, plumber's insulation. It's not real thick. Um, but I want to be careful because I don't want to put anything else in there like this that would potentially get wet. It's not weather rated. Basically everything I've bought though is, um, is, is rated. Even this, uh, quote by the way, you're thinking, oh, what about splashing? So this is IP68 or 86 or one of those ratings. Uh, you actually can be submerged in water up to six feet deep. So. Everything in here is going to be waterproof, um, which is one other final concern I'll have, which I won't know by the time this uh, video is done, is what if a lot of water gets in here? How's it going to get out? No drain, right? That's the whole point of insulating it. Um, my kids do splash a little bit, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, this is probably the last video before she goes live. Um, a couple other minor things. So taped up the seams in the corner, probably doesn't matter, whatever. Um, found out in the back here that two and a half inches is uh, not enough to get the ground plug. You can almost get 
um, to plug out, but the ground sticks out just far enough. Uh, so I had to take my new Dremel, just cut out a little notch there. So this, once I figure out everything fits well, is gonna I'm gonna foam that in. I have no intentions of ever taking this thing out of the box, and if I do, the foam should pop out pretty easily. Um, so we're gonna wait till we get that out there, and then. One other thing that's kind of bugging me, remember earlier I told you that when I flip this upside down here that I'm not sure um, if it's exactly the same height. So um, I took this uh, two and a half inch hole saw here and very, very sloppy, uh, kind of added some length here. So instead of having these nice two and a half inch holes. So um, if you do this, three inches for sure um, and really make sure you line it up well and then obviously assemble your Rubbermaid container properly the first time so hey that's why people do YouTube videos to learn from other people's stupid mistakes um, again you want to keep this hole small uh, it's less insulation that you'll want to or need to have to put around the edges of it um, but also by the way you gotta get your hands in there from the other side to be able to spin it so three inches for sure See, this is uh, lined up pretty well now. The uh, tub should fit in there nicely. I've got really no concerns. A little bit of jagged edges here with this plastic. Um, nothing that feels like it's sharp to it's gonna hurt anything. But wouldn't that be a son of a gun, huh? Maybe I'll pull some of those out with some pliers just to be sure. Um, I hate to pull this, so anyhow. It. Next video should be up and running. All right, I know uh, when I edit these, they're gonna all appear together, and sometimes I talk like it's an episode. Um, but it's honestly, it's it's been almost two weeks um, since I filmed the part before this. Um, if you watch this at some point in the future, which obviously you will, uh, it'll be the future. Is uh, if you recall that crazy storms that we had come through. Uh, Dallas, uh, and Texas, all of Texas, parts of Louisiana got hit really bad. So that's that's where we're at. We're the, the end of February here. I'm in the Northeast. We just got hit with brutal, brutal cold and a shit ton, that technical term again, of, uh, of snow. So like, I just didn't even want to bother with this. You can still see there's a decent amount of snow down here. I mean, it's, we just got pummeled and it's been really, really cold. The whole point of this thing is for it to hold up in those conditions but um didn't uh, just didn't feel like dealing with it obviously so um next update here will be this thing hooked up and hopefully leak free um cords just barely made it over there i don't know i might get a small extension cord for that I'm gonna seal this but i'm not gonna seal up anything until i get the tub out here inflated leak free and feeling good Okay, so this is the final test here. Uh, I am 100 million times happy that I cut out a little bit more hand room in there. It's not hard, but it's just, it's just kind of a pain to get all those lined up with little hand room. If you got smaller hands, maybe it's easier. Um, it is still off just a tad. You can see that's kind of rested on there. I don't know. This is not my best engineering skills, despite my degree. Because of the snow and how level it might be, what it's going to look like when it melts. But it's lined up does not appear to be leaning. We're gonna fill it with some water and then obviously run the blowers. Um, for sure my measurements were a little off when I put this Rubbermaid thing in upside down. That is still, through this whole project, the dumbest thing I've done. And I hope you didn't tune out at that point because we all make dumb mistakes. But anyhow, um, she's buttoned up, she's heat traced. Um, nothing's on yet. And uh, we're gonna fill her with water after I put the filters in and cross our fingers and see how we do here all right so update 
and uh, I'll learn from my mistake number two, three, four. Um, yeah, most of the way filling up, didn't hear any leaks, started doing some stuff around the garage, came back, heard a small drip. Now, when I took this thing apart, after I tried it out for a week, I found a rubber gasket. Diagrams don't show what it goes to. Didn't think much of it, thought that's not good. Um, but can't seem to see where it came from. Thought maybe it was a foot or something on the bottom of the pump. Uh, turns out those were very important. There's little black caps that go on the end of each of these. Uh, and that's what was leaking. Um, so thankfully I found both of them in the snow. They're both back on and we wasted a lot of water and time. We're going to do this again. All right, got an update here. So, he's running. He's not leaking. I learned a couple things because it started leaking again. I don't know what the hell this deals with the deal with those rubber gaskets are. I definitely think they belong there. But, um, what I found, and again, it's based on how I drilled those holes. This top thing here really, like, pushes down here. So I needed to go a little bit more to the left. And again, I think I can't stress enough giving yourself some uh, some extra room there. So even when I thought I had it on there, um, it just wasn't. I recommend doing that top one first, too. Again, depending on how you do the holes, because that bottom piece there is very flexible. Uh, the top one is not, and then the bottom left is, is also, I say bottom left, I guess bottom right, that one's also hard, it's very rigid. <laughs> um, but anyhow, this, it just couldn't get in there. Um, and then really wrenching it, wrenching it, turn it clockwise, and finally got one more spin and it stopped dripping. Basically what I found is you could feel it on the bottom right one dripping down on it pump's running now, heat trace is on, turned everything on like as is, going to keep filling this up, and then go from there, bubbles seem to be working well too. <laughs> did notice that, I don't know if it's from last time, for kids, of course now you can't see it anymore, but maybe you saw it for a second, there's a little bit of debris in there, um, you can buy like a little electric water vax, I may check one of those out, obviously they got a pool over here, and in the summer it'd just be easy to just hook that up, back that out, but right now it's not, so I'll figure that out too. A little happier than I was a while ago, but I lost couple hundred gallons my hands are freaking freezing because it's 40 degrees out here and I'm lost about an hour's worth of time troubleshooting that but again YouTube has saved my ass a bunch of time so I hope it saves yours on this one too from learning from my mistakes okay so this is the last update before I do like a final final update after trying it out because who cares if you haven't used it a few times right so I got my steps here, I got this little towel hanger daily I bought, filled it with sand, they say fill it with water, obviously you don't want to do that if it's going to freeze. Got the cover on, got the heat trace plugged in, everything's hooked up there so I can be able to monitor the electricity. This is all rated to be submerged and outdoors, so no concerns there. Do kind of a redneck foam job there try it again try to keep everything as insulated as we can uh, so a couple other things just as I finalize this um, if you've ever had a hot tub before you know like one of the bigger pains in the ass is putting the cover in and off I don't care if it's a nice six thousand dollar one or not uh, you're all cold you want to cover it back up uh, this cover itself was pretty snug for obvious reasons and now it's really tight in there so I don't know um, again I'm gonna have to use this a bunch to then feel like if this whole thing was worth it obviously the whole reason to do it was to keep it all weather four seasons and three seasons so it's like is it worth the hassle right so we'll get to that uh, after we use it for a couple weeks 
um, the lid also um, kind of hits the edge here. So raises up, no problem. I think that's fine. Um, a little kind of a side right here. Gonna keep that in here and maybe some other stuff. Um, if you're gonna have a hundred dollar container, you might as well use it. Heat trace is pretty warm. Um, I have like little plumber's insulation tape. I thought about wrapping all this up in. Maybe at some point I still do it. Gosh, I know it's so tight, so snug, which again is maybe a good thing. I might not do it. Um, it's a whopping 43 degrees. Remember, it's been really cold here for a while, so our groundwater is really cold. It's going to take a long time to heat up. My other plan, obviously, is you can set this so once it's not heating, the pump isn't running. I think is why they don't rate it as four seasons because pump stops running, your water stops flowing, it could freeze up and damage some stuff. So that's the whole point of the heat trace. For me to save some money so it's not running 24-7. Um, obviously when the heater kicks back on, the pump recirculates. So um, again, TBD there. This is, I'll, uh, I'll add it up next time I do it, how much this cost me in total, but not too bad, I don't think. And, uh, and yeah, so that is, uh, that's it. And, uh, we'll see you again soon. Um, uh, get final thoughts on this bad boy. Okay, so this is probably going to be the last update. Um, so far, so good. Can't think of anything really negative to report back about this thing. Um, it has been really cold and then decently warm on and off here. You can still see we got a decent amount of snow. It is the middle of March and it's unbelievable that it's nice and sunny out, but uh, still pretty cold. So um, one thing I guess that is a negative, when I first had this going, I would pull down here. Uh, that caused a tear right here. So. I submitted a warranty claim. They want proof of purchase and stuff. I think I'll get this replaced. Um, and then every time you tug on this, um, it just keeps ripping and ripping. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, the other thing I have found is um, I don't think I really need the heat trace. Um, it uses a little bit of energy, but it just it stays so warm and cool. when you lift this up, whether the heat trace is on or not, I mean you can just feel the heat. Um, so. Another thing I did um, was take the drink holder off. It's just so tight and snug in here now um, that leaving that on with this cover is, is tough. So um, the nice thing again about that controller is you can turn the heat trace on and off with your phone as long as you have Wi-Fi out here. Um, again, this is a bit tight. That's probably my really only complaint. The other thing that I did, um, if you remember previously, this is all snowy. So this is up at an angle, and I think you can pretty clearly see here that this is not level. Had it been about three or four inches forward, I don't think it would have been putting the pressure um, on those holes that made it really difficult for me to tighten up. So those hole sizes might be just fine, uh, but when I was messing around with the snow, I went just a little too far back and it's sitting up on some of this mud. Uh, when I drain it in a couple months, because they do say, you know, change it three to four times a year, your water. Um, that's something that I'll move forward just a bit. It's pretty tight here though. Um, obviously when the pool covers up, it's not gonna be a big deal. I just might end up repositioning it just a little bit. Uh, we've probably been in and out of this four or five times, maybe six, since it's all been up and running. Uh, and really, no complaints. I think if you watch this whole video from start to finish and, and try to learn from my mistakes, it'll probably take you, I don't know, four or five hours maybe. Um, and that's, again, learning from what I did wrong. You gotta have the right tools, a little decent mechanical knowledge. I think you'll be okay. Um, so far I recommend it. I'll probably put all this together when I get a free minute and uh in the comment section i'll update if anything goes sideways or wrong i mean again the real the real thing with this is how long does it last right am i going to get four years out of this i don't know is it going to freeze up in the middle of the winter i hope not right that's the extra um 
you know, $200 or so that I spent to try to weatherproof this. Um, one other thing that was crazy, so we had a pretty bad windstorm. This screen here, um, these little screen holder pins, one of them fell out a while ago, blew right off, came down, knocked the power out. I just happened to check the next day uh, and found that it was about 80 degrees and obviously the pump wasn't circulating. Uh, did not find any damage as a result of that, so that was nice. Um, with the heat trace off, um, um, but I was plugging it in, I guess the point there before I lose my thought was, you know, you're, you're so vulnerable, right? If, if that is unplugged and this is just sitting here stagnant, and the heat trace is off, and even if it is, there's nothing circulating, that's where your pipes might freeze and break and things. So um, it was down to like 90-something, I think, when I plugged it back in. It seems to be working fine. Um, is the other point. There's one other thing I wanted to add. Now my broom is, is forgetting. Um, but yeah, hoping to get, you know, four or five years out of it. I don't, I don't think that's unrealistic. You know, the kids beat it up pretty good. Um, so far we're, we're liking it. And, um, and yeah. Okay. I remember the point when I was making. So what does it cost, right? So it's going to be, uh, dependent on the temperature outside. Uh, when it is in the low thirties, high twenties, um, with the heat trace, it's about two two fifty a day, and that's considering twelve cents a kilowatt hour. With the heat trace off, when it was in the forties and fifties for a couple days, and then not using it, obviously every time you take the cover off and run the jets and put it back on, you're going to use a lot more energy. We're at about a buck fifty, right? So it's not going to be anywhere near that in the summertime uh, when it's nice and warm outside and doesn't have to work as hard to maintain the temperature despite the extra insulation. Um, I think you should probably budget for 400 a year, um, maybe five, depending on usage. I think usage depends greatly on it because every time you take that off, that cover's gonna gonna go. But um, you know, ultimately, um, I mean, I don't know what you think a hot tub's gonna cost. And of course, if you did want to do this, get one of these things. You've watched this video and you're like, eh, I'm not gonna mess around with the winter, and you're only gonna run it in the spring and the summer. Probably a couple hundred bucks, um, but you do need to realize you've got 220 gallons in this four person and, and even more in the six person that you're, that you're keeping heated, right? So that's going to cost money um, on top of the three, four, five hundred bucks you pay for the whole deal. Plus, you got accessories and chemicals. Um, you know, I've got a pool, so using the bromine tabs and a little bit of chlorine and, and baking soda to, to balance the pH. Steps for a hundred bucks, towel holder, right? Optional, all that stuff. Um, you know, you need to you need to factor in when you're going to do this. For us, didn't want to drop five or six grand, right? Uh, we might get a year or so into this, and the novelty might completely wear off. And I'm glad we didn't. Most people I talk to, that's what they say. So I'm rambling, obviously, at this point. Uh, maybe you've tuned out. Maybe you're uh, you keep listening, but I'm I'm happy, right? We are in under a thousand dollars, easy, and the kids have fun. The wife and I like it. Um, it is not on par with a five six thousand dollar hot tub uh, but it is well under that cost it can be taken up and put down at any moment so there's pros and cons there um, i would say add some comments in the section here below if you are discovering things to do differently or if you have questions i will be glad to help them all right good luck guys and, uh, and happy soaking hey youtube so um you won't know this because you watched the video all together, but it is October of 2022. Um, I never posted, put together, or made uh, a YouTube video of all the clips that you just watched. Um, and those were filmed in February of 2020. So we're going on winter number two here. Uh, first season was kind of the tail end of winter. Made it through a whole nother winter. Um, and I am happy to say uh, that this thing is still going strong. Um, I want to address a couple things, and I think this is what will really be helpful that it's been now uh, going into two seasons here uh, to talk about uh, with this unit. So some of the previous videos, you can see that this is pretty tight in here. 
um, when the snow melted and I did my uh, semi-annual water change, I was actually able to shift this out a little bit more so it does give more room to open. Um, previously in the video, you'll see that's a little bit tighter. Um, everything in here has been great. Um, the heat trace has been good. Turn that off during the uh, summer. Uh, normally keep it a little cooler in the summer. Uh, we really just don't use it that much in the summer, fall and uh, winter though. Um, the cover itself. Um, so this is the second cover uh, and it's like I said going on two years. So you'll know even if you've had expensive hot tubs that the covers just need to be replaced. They take a beating from the sun, rain, wind, elements, uh, and the, the uh, stuff, the, the rubber uh, coverings there go bad. Um, about two or three weeks ago I took this off and this whole top got really brittle, started cracking. Um, and that's when I said, oh crap, right? And so now there's been some water in here and things. And so I uh, went online, ordered another one. They're going for about $130 now, the insulated ones. Uh, I don't think that's too bad every two years. Um, and again, even if you had a really nice hot tub, generally covers are something you need to replace here and there anyhow. Uh, you can see some tape here um, with my kids. Uh, and even probably my fault because this is a little bit tighter though, this seam here has ripped. I mentioned this is cover number two. The first one ripped pretty early on and that's just because I, you know, you're cold, you're out here, you're tugging on it to get it off or you're tugging on it to get it on, you're not paying attention. So that's something to be aware of with this setup, with this box is um, that seam there is just, it's just not really well enforced or reinforced or whatever you want to say there. So it does rip a little easier. Um, Overall, um, again, still really happy um, with this. Um, what are some other things that we've done? Let me, uh, let me pause this and I'll take the cover off. So some other observations, things to note a couple years in. Um, the little single um, chlorine or bromine tablet holder that comes with it just doesn't work. Uh, this is a Pentair chlorine floater you can find it on Amazon I think it's 15 20 bucks it holds a bunch and I let it float for a while uh, and I think it does a, a much better job of keeping the levels good um, I've had a pool for a long time here and I've never had real chemistry issues um, managing the balance but this um, this one was a little tougher so a um, couple different products that I got um, again going on years I was using these two um, is a spa guard enhanced shock and just general bromine uh, concentrate and then of course my um, meter there to measure ph and um, levels uh, a couple times i got really high um, and so kind of a little bit of playing around with that to get the levels that you need to get uh, and i think what happened when some of the levels got high is uh, and you you can find this online is the there's like a black paint on the interior of the motor um, and with the higher bromine levels or maybe it's just a defect that started to flake off and what you'll notice on the top port there that's the inlet there's not supposed to be a filter there but it was shooting black flakes all over the place um, called up in text actually sent a replacement pump uh, i haven't installed it i just put that filter there instead keeping my uh, levels where they need to be and it's been okay since then um, but that is something to be aware of. Um, so I've got an extra pump if I ever need it, um, but that was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, you can see this is a little dirty. I haven't cleaned it since the last time I get in. Got in. Uh, Intex also makes uh, an electronic vacuum um, that I definitely recommend. Um, so this thing is great. Uh, 70 bucks or so, um, but you really don't have a good way to vacuum out the crud. Um, this is electronic, it doesn't work when it's above water. Um, but you submerge it in here, and you can see the bubbles, uh, and it's great for just picking up crud that's floating around. I think you can see there, picking up all that stuff real nice. Um, and otherwise, you really don't have a great way to kind of clean debris and stuff from kids or anybody really that, that gets in there. Um, electricity usage, right? So in the Northeast, New York, what am I spending? Um, in the summer, not so much. In the winter, obviously more. Um, but with all the insulating and everything I did, 
um, it's about a dollar a day, right? Um, if we're honest and electricity prices are going up, you're probably going to be spending, you know, in the neighborhood of 250 to 350 um, maybe a little bit more if you're using it constantly, a little bit less. I keep it at 104 um, in the winter time because, again, one of the drawbacks here is this is electric. And the only way to get the bubbles to go is to suck outside air in. And it does not heat when the cover is off. And uh, in about 20 minutes worth of time, you will lose about 5 or 6 degrees. And uh, in that half an hour or so or less that you're in here, it will be down into the 90s by the time you get out whereas you know the more expensive traditional hot tub um, you know that's heating and blowing bubbles at the same time this one does not do that so um, maintenance is pretty easy you can buy those replacement filters for pretty good price uh, every couple months or so I just rinse them and then about once a year I put in new filters um, you could probably do it more than that but it's pretty easy to rinse them too so that's my uh, year and a half two year update still going strong uh, new covers an issue with the pump that I think has nothing to do with the heat uh, just something that um, you know may have happened with some pool chemistry or might be a bad design but you know to Intex credit they covered it under warranty um, you know if this died if it ripped got a hole in it or something would I replace it you know I don't I don't think so just really don't use it enough um, which is kind of why I'm glad I started this instead of going out and spending five or six grand on one and then not using it as much. It's not that I don't like the hot tub itself. It's just a little bit of a process to get out here to get in to find time to relax, which is kind of the whole point, right? To find time to relax. Um, but um, for that, for the amount of money, less than the grand that I've spent on this, money well, well spent. Um, so I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. Um, I'm years within uh, between making videos here, so um, I haven't even watched the old ones to see what makes sense and what doesn't. Cheers.